Hello, welcome to Inside California History. Uh, my name is Devin. Hello. Hey. Want to say hi? Well, I, like every other citizen in the state of California, am currently stuck inside because of the coronavirus. I don't know about you, but I'm going a little bit stir crazy, stuck in my house, um, looking at all the same stuff. Oh, buddy. Meow. 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 I don't know if that. <laughs> but I have this funny thing where I basically see California history all around me. So I figured, well, maybe I can tell a couple of stories about California history through the objects here in my house. First up is this watercolor painting on the wall behind me. It's the first thing you see when you come in my home. It's pretty amateurish. It's a watercolor I did a few years back of my memory of what it looks like to be at the very top of Riones Regional Park looking out over Sassoon Bay. It has a lot of inaccuracies, but it's how I remembered it in my mind uh, when I sat down to do it. Um, it's one of my favorite of the East Bay Regional Parks. Um, and you might have wondered why it's called Briones Regional Park. Well, that brings us to a very interesting figure in early Bay Area history, um, Juana Briones, who is not who the park is named after, but she's interesting nonetheless. Juana Briones was one of the largest uh, women landholders in uh, early California. She was born in 1802 near present-day Santa Cruz in the settlement of Bronza Forte. She was born into Spanish California, and during her life, she saw that place become Mexican California and ultimately American California. As a girl, her family moved to the present-day location of the Presidio in San Francisco. There at the Presidio, she ended up marrying a soldier who turned out to be physically abusive to her. So in 1840, she started what turned out to be a lengthy legal process to file for separation, um, which she was successful at, which was a wild, um, relatively unheard of thing to do at the time. Um, she then moved her children over to a piece of land that she acquired in present-day North Beach, including the area of Washington Square. And uh, there she ended up establishing herself as a very successful businesswoman, selling dairy goods. Also, she was a, a well-noted uh, healer uh, using traditional medicines. Um, she ultimately uh, parlayed her business success into buying a massive rancho above what is now Palo Alto. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in 1848, and that settled the uh, Mexican-American War. And one of the terms of that treaty is that all land claims from formerly Mexican citizens were supposed to be respected by the new U.S. government. Um, the reality was that most Mexican landholders ended up losing their land because of the costs of defending those claims in court. Juana Briones was also forced to defend her land claim, and her legal battles ended up going all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where she ultimately won. As a result, she became one of only 22 or so known Native or California uh, women to have successfully defended their land claims under U.S. law. Now, one of the other women is her sister-in-law. Her sister-in-law was Maria Manuela Valencia Briones. She was born in 1795 and lived until 1884. When her husband died, she ended up filing a claim to a massive rancho in present-day Contra Costa County. She also had to fight legal battles over her rights to this land, um, but ultimately won. And that rancho um, ended up becoming, in 1967, a regional park, uh, today's Briones Regional Park. Her home was in the vicinity of the present-day Bear Creek staging area, which is a real popular entrance to the park. So if you ever make it to Briones Regional Park, I hope you think both of uh, Maria Briones um, as well as her sister-in-law, Juana Briones, two truly remarkable figures in California history. And think about what remarkable times they both lived through and what remarkable feat it was that they were able to amass such a large amount of land as independent women in Mexican California and to then defend those claims in American California at a time when even competent, well-off men were unable to do so.